Welcome back to another edition of Special Situations Investing with Greg. This week I will be talking about Prague Holdings. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of my YouTube channel on Special Situations Investing through and my personal investing practice. As a quick disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Any companies that I mention in this presentation are discussed solely for illustrative purposes. Discussing such companies and the specifics about them is to help educate me and educate you about certain special situations. It is not a solicitation to purchase them. I recommend that you conduct your own research and identify why you might want to own the company yourself prior to your committing of any funds. I also recommend that you seek the services of a financial advisor that has considered your personal situation as your fiduciary. And then finally, may your education here grow your knowledge, improve your personal investing performance, and give you the confidence to take control of your future. Thanks a bunch for watching. Now on to the video. Before we get started, I know that some people will just skip through the disclaimer and stuff like that, but I want you to be aware that when I do these videos that are a little bit longer form, I am not talking about full or complete due diligence. Most of the time, this is just my thoughts on an investment that I am looking at or have already purchased. So if you want additional due diligence, guess what? You have to do your own work. So uh, I just want you to be aware of that as you get into this video. So but here are my thoughts on prog holdings. One of the reasons I like to consider or like to participate in special situations and tender offers is that it gives me an opportunity for exposure to companies that may be setting themselves up for uh, significant amounts of success over the next couple of years. This success should turn into uh, significant shareholder returns as well. And I think that this is the case that is currently occurring with Prague Holdings. Prague Holdings, ticker symbol PRG, is a leasing and finance company that was split out of Aaron's, a lease-to-own retailer, in December of 2020. The company has about three main product segments, the first one being pr progressive leasing. This is focused on leasing merchandise solutions for furniture, mattresses, appliances, electronics, jewelry, mobile phones, and automobile electronics, among other things. They have data from over 10 million leases funded since 1999 and have integrated their operations with point of sale partners with both in both the traditional and the e-commerce uh, platforms. Their second business main product segment is Vive Financial and this is their lending arm and it's focused on subprime or near prime uh, consumer credit basically providing credit cards to those that are that are in the 600 to 700 FICO score areas. In conjunction with their leasing arm, Prog Holdings can provide these credit cards to customers, again, through their point of sale partners. And then finally, Four Technologies. Four Technologies is a buy now, pay later solution that Prog Holdings allows their point of sale customers to use. In summary, the Prog Holdings business is focused on the customer of the 600 to 700 FICO school score and helping them buy merchandise that they may not otherwise be able to get financing for. I see Prog Holdings business as having two main customers. Now, the obvious one is the leasees that go in and use Prog Holdings to, to get their merchandise. But the other one, and I think this is the main business uh, change that Prog Holdings has and probably one of their key performance indicators is that they're point of sale partnerships and if they can have good point of sale partnerships with with the businesses that they have specifically like Aaron's then they can go ahead and leverage that to go a, and sell more of their financial products to the customers that walk through those those retailers doors I see them taking care of their customers in two different ways first they take care of the lease ease by providing real-time results uh, on their lease applications and this the in the 2020 10k it said that they were able to get this below six seconds for their approval time uh, at about 90 percent 97 percent of the time so significantly fast and automated and very very well uh, very well rounded work they also take care of their point of sale partners by providing all the back end uh, processes needed to finance these uh, some of the subprime credit consumers 
note that because of the subprime nature of their business, in April of 2020, the company did pay $175 million to the Federal Trade Commission based on some of the leasing disclosures that they had. Now, they, no company is going to admit any type of fault. They think that their, their disclosures were fine, but they, they did admit that they had to, sit, to spend $175 million in order to resolve some of the concerns that the FTC levied against them. I think this is a regulatory risk that will always be present with any type of company like Prague Holdings. And because approximately 25% of the population is going to be in their, in their prime customer business, tar customer target market. And so they're always going to, they're always going to be, you know, the, the people that are evil because they're, they're providing leasing to people that are, that are in the subprime category. And with 25% of the population kind of meeting that expect that that demographic, that turns into, you know, a lot of constituents for congressmen and congresswomen, and they they want to make sure that they're taking care of their constituents. So there always will be a little bit of a regulatory risk, and there always will be a little bit of uh, uh, legislative risk that's associated with this company, just due to the nature of the business that they're in. Although I don't always like to look at the long-term strategy of a business, I, if I'm going to hold it for a little while, I need to understand what their long-term strategies are. And with this company, the focus is on increasing the gross value of all of the all of the sales that go through their process. So if they can increase the the amount of money that goes goes through their purchasing. Uh, programs and their lease programs, then their income is obviously going to go up. This is really good for the retailers that they work with as well, because if they they are they are winning, and so are the retailers, because the retailers are able to sell their product, move on, and and then Prague is able to get the lease and and work that side of the of the transaction. The second thing that they do in their long term strategy is they're trying to leverage technology to increase the the customer. And the the con the consumer experience and so with them they they have about thirty percent of their market on this least own area and so I think I think if they can continue to have that and penetrate that market even further it will definitely be good over the long run and then finally they they do talk about it in their in their ten k about having customer experience and. Uh, and I'm skeptical sometimes on this just because of the nature of their consumers that use this, that they might have issues with customer service, especially if somebody decides they don't want to pay. And in an environment where some people are unwilling or unable to pay, uh, I, can, I can see their, their reputation being somewhat, you know, less than stellar with some in the mindset of some consumers. A good example of this is if you look at someone like like a Dave Ramsey, he he would never want to own a company like this uh, outright, like like I'm doing, because the company, uh, well, it focuses on leases and debt, and that's that's just not his his thing. In fact, he's on a crusade against it. I usually like to make sure that the long-term strategy makes sense, and then I like to look at the numbers of what they're doing. So that brings us to the numbers. Part of the reason why Prague came to my to my my view is that they had a tender offer for that turned out to be 13.2 percent of the shares outstanding of the company and they pre-purchased this uh between i think it was 45 to, to 50 dollars a share about a month ago and they repurchased about 13 percent of the total shares outstanding making it so that they um uh, for about three or excuse me for about 425 million dollars so significant portion of their shares were outstanding were, were taken off of the public, mar public markets through this tender offer. One thing that I noticed as I was digging into the numbers, I, I, and I think that it's important to understand the accounting side of this, is that this company, it's, because its business is focused around leasing, they purchase the merchandise straight up, and then they, they basically give the they're purchasing essentially the paper for the transaction so they let the consumer take the product home they have the paper on it they manage the lease and then they are able to you know get the money at a certain return from the consumer and most of their loans take about 12 months according to their their 10ks 
This allows them to depreciate these products that they own through these through administrating administering the lease. So as they are able to depreciate the products, they actually uh, are able to recoup those costs of that original that original investment. Let's illustrate how this how this helps them. So back in in 2020, they had approximately 2.4 billion dollars in in revenue, and then they they had about 2.1 billion dollars in depreciation expense. So even though they they brought in free cash flow of about 450 million, they they basically had about 20 million or 30 million in in actual taxes on that. And so that depreciation expense significantly reduced the amount of cash that they that they had to had to pay taxes on. And and I think that 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 is one of the one of the big things that this company it has an asset light model as some people describe it. It allows them to be successful over time. I think this comes into play in a couple of areas when you analyze this company. Uh, because they can depreciate, and I, in my view, rightly so, the the merchandise. But because most of their business is on a leased owned space, they don't have the long term carry cost of the depreciating assets when their customers pay out or buy out their lease. This doesn't mean that the depreciation expense is not real. It is. In fact, in a worst case scenario, if all of the other business stopped tomorrow and the leasees ceased paying, they would eventually be holding 90% depreciated assets uh, at full price. And they would not have the opportunity to recoup these losses. Now, I, I see such a scenario to be unlikely, and even if it were to happen, this would be this would be an economic event that would affect all companies and not just Prague Holdings would be bankrupt. In fact, there would be dozens of other com companies that would also be bankrupt in this area. In my view though, because they're serving a, a population in the subprime or near prime market, they would, they would fare better actually in a downturn because more people would be potential customers in that time. I, and I know that's a terrible way to look at it, but that is, that is one of the, one of the things that I, that I see with this company. So the, in a typical year over the past three years, the company generated somewhere around 350 to 450 million. And then the, the cash outlay, outlay for CapEx in order to sustain this is about 150 million. That puts them closely at about 200 to 300 million in free cash flow. And if you look at that, uh, let's just go on the, I'm gonna go on the 300 million because I think that that's an appropriate number for the next couple of years for the company. Basically, you're looking at a company that is trading at an enterprise value roughly about 12 times that. So usually 10 times is, is a no-brainer in my view, and 12 times is definitely in the right area for it. However, if we look at the operating earnings, uh, the way that Greenback calculates his earnings before interest in taxes, we're looking at a company that is essentially returning about 50% on the, the capital, the tangible capital employed. And what this means to me is that the company is generating enough cash to take the company private in two years, or it, it's essentially like a buyback or a payback time of 24 months. So I can see this company doing quite well because I think that the, the price is right at this time based on the repurchase of shares and also the fact that the company is, is basically just a cash generating machine. Speaking of the cash generation capabilities, I like to look at a company that has a return on tangible capital of, of at least 20% per year. And this company on average is looking closer to about that 100 to 150% uh, of return on tangible capital over the last five years based on their operations. And this tells me that the company should have plenty of cash to do a lot of the things that you would want to, to see them do over, over time. So what do I do with this then? I, I see that this company should be trading somewhere around $90 a share at, at this time. And uh, I expect to hold it for about, you know, somewhere between three to five years to see how the, the company does over that, fares over that time frame. And uh, I'm, I'm expecting to continue to purchase as, as I go through that.
In full disclosure, I own about 10% of my total stock investment portfolio in this, in this company, which represents about 3% of my total overall net worth. With that in mind, that means that I'm, I'm willing to risk, but I'm not willing to risk so much that it's going to make a huge detriment if it goes south on this. The other thing to think about this and to consider with this is that my entry price is about $44.35 per share. So I know that the share price recently moved up over the last week, and I was hoping that it would continue to stay below 45 because that's kind of how I would like to, like to get into it. One final thought. Uh, after considering the the risks of the regulatory and legal risks that were taught, brought about by the FTC, I also thought that it would be good to note that one of the other major risks would be a cyber attack against Prague Holdings networks. And these are two risks that I think are definitely uh, possible, especially with with things that are going on in the world at any given time, there's there always seems to be some sort of some sort of issue with a company's or with many companies' uh, networks and the software that they have behind those networks. So Prague Holdings may have to spend additional money in order to keep up with the the requirements to keep their networks and their their computer systems safe. All in all, I think that Prague Holdings demonstrates a decent risk-reward re, uh, ratio at this time. And um, if you liked watching this video and you have any comments, that your own thoughts on this, please share them below. I, I appreciate everybody that, that shares comments with me. And then finally, if you have not subscribed or liked the video, uh, those are the things that help me recognize that the work that I'm doing is relevant to you. So please do so, and we will catch you next week. Thanks a bunch for watching.